Hey Riz fans, Riz is going to school you a little bit today on product analytics. A lot to cover in that area. We're covering everything from e-commerce to software as a service to media type apps and more. But product analytics is basically just the practice of using data to understand users, the user's behavior, how they're using the products, and quantifying the business impact of product decisions. So we have another channel, Thinkermetrics, that covers digital analytics across the web and social media and all of those things, but we're mostly focused on product today, although there's a lot of overlap with a ton of functions. When talking about analytics, useful metrics are the ones that are accurate. They measure what they say they're going to measure, but they're also aligned with your goals. So more metrics is not better. You actually want to focus down on the metrics that are focused towards your goals and the things you want to do. One caveat here is don't overdo the data. Data is an amazing tool that helps us do the things we want to do, but it's also a red flag. Something that you believe about product management that maybe other people are less convinced. Most PMs, most jobs, most products, you're gonna be better off talking to 10 users and you'll get more and better insights out of why things are happening than you would with any dashboard. What I like to call being overly focused on data is over empiricization. So big word, probably not gonna catch on, but to me, that means referring to an excessive reliance on quantitative data and metrics, so much so that you're ignoring this broader understanding of the system of different effects, the qualitative insights you're getting from users that ends up leading to long-term value, a great customer experience. And there's a lot of critical factors around innovation that you might be ignoring for optimizing for something that's one smaller metric. One way to warm up thinking about digital analytics is the e-commerce checkout flow that we all know and are familiar with. You know, we go to a product page, we look at a shopping product detail page of a wireless phone or something like that. You add it to cart, you fill out your address and payment info and all that sort of thing. Sometimes it's a little more complex with a little credit check and things like that, but you get the idea. You end up getting a maybe an upsell message and then an order confirmation. So that is really similar to a sales funnel, which is the classic way of looking at sales from a bunch of people that are potential prospects narrowing down into the customers that convert to a sale. So that's your sales conversion and sales is anything moving from one step to another, that percentage of people that make it along those ways. And I know, hold up, you'll see a whole bunch of other way more complex structures of growth loops and all that sort of thing. That will be coming in another video soon, but we are gonna start out slow, walk before you run. The e-commerce sales funnel is that customer journey from awareness to purchase in that context, that process of looking at our visitors as they move from step to step. We can calculate the percentage who then are able to make it along through each of those steps and all the way to the final purchase at the end. And that shows the effectiveness of our sales funnel. It shows our effectiveness of our technology. It shows the different pieces we have put in place, the different features and offers and much more. And we can dial in the pieces that need to be improved. So this is what it would look like as you're adding a product to the cart. In this case, the hair color for Madison Reed. And as you add it to the cart, you'll notice the different parts of that checkout flow and how that's optimized as you go. And shout out to the Thinkermetrics channel. There's a video on optimizing throughout the checkout funnel and showing you how you can discover opportunities in each of those steps along the way. All right, startup pirate metrics. Arr, yeah, had to do it. They are A, A, R, R, R. Originally called startup pirate metrics from Dave McCour is acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, and referral. Sometimes they flip the last two there, but it is just a way to talk about that funnel, that flow across from being a prospect and coming in from traffic, from Google, from Facebook, from other advertisements, a billboard or something in a QR code, all the way through to your website and to then the revenue of converting to a customer and then referral, hopefully to refer out to friends to bring back and, uh, buy more. So by mapping all of those metrics to the lifecycle stage, we can 
understand that different behavior of a customer and optimize the different touch points and then work on prioritizing features that maximize that value um, by driving those users through that funnel. So that really shows you the value of features. So those pirate metrics, that upper funnel is really the domain of digital marketing where you're working on awareness even before you hit acquisition. And that's brand awareness and reach and opportunities to bring those users in. So we wanna get that brand and product out in front of those target audiences. And then we wanna convert those visitors to users. And so now as we move towards that lower funnel, that becomes the domain of product analytics. So whether you're an e-commerce category manager or you're a product manager of an app, that is where you'll look at activation and making those new users on board and getting engaged. And then you move towards retaining those users and analyzing the churn of those users that become inactive and drop off and then you can refer them and track that and then you get revenue of course you want business impact you want to quantify that impact of those features so are the features you are building driving business value so you can monitor the return on investment that you're developing with all of these resources and product usage. Are they actually using those features? Are they engaged and using the key features that you built? Then how satisfied are they? Which you can then work on optimizing a lot of these with A-B testing through the user experience and looking at typical metrics like you would see like NPS and the net promoter score and everything like that. All right. Pirate metrics example, Chubby's. Chubby's shorts, not gonna admit to wearing them. Great company. And there's a quote on LinkedIn, a lot of sharing from the, the founder, Tom, about the growth and growing for five years, just incredibly fast and spending a lot of money to do so. Obviously that kind of direct to consumer area takes a lot of advertising on Facebook and Google and the sort like that to build up that brand. And he talks a lot about how he shifted from that to the next stage of their business. And at any rate, some hilarious products that do really suit well to digital marketing. Let's go through some examples for Chubbies. So acquisition, what kind of things would you measure to cover acquisition? That is the unique visitors to the Chubbies website through organic search, through paid ads, through social media campaigns, then landing on the page. And then you'll have the impressions and follower growth rate on the social media platforms. They really blew up on TikTok and things like that. And that is, you know, exposure. So you've got acquisition, but then activating those users and onboarding them onto the site. That's the percentage of those visitors who sign up for a newsletter or create an account. And then what is the ratio of those users who then go on to look at maybe like a style guide or a featured a page of novelty shorts, I guess. And then the first purchase. So the first purchase is key. How many visitors are then making their first purchase after the newsletter or maybe after creating an account? They might wait till after they purchase to create an account. So it kind of depends on, on what flow goes there. Then retention. So who has a repeat purchase? Can you bring these users back? You have that cost of acquiring customer, that acquisition cost, the CAC. And now you're trying to bring them back. So you don't have to spend all that expensive advertising money on them anymore. You have them on the newsletter. You have them kind of remembering where to go and they need a great gift. It's cheaper. So then you have referral. So you're letting them do the marketing for you. So the number of users participating in that refer a friend. So, you know, maybe you get that five, 10, $15 off your allowing them to bring more people to you. So that's even better. And then they also, you know, share out to social media, obviously that share button, sometimes it's overused a little bit, but you're getting some uh, earned marketing there. Also, uh, yeah, reviews on referrals. So reviews and user generated content that they post on social media, especially in this kind of product, they can definitely drive a lot of that and do even better. Of course, that revenue area is what we really care about. We want the average order value per customer to go up and up to track the growth with revenue. So it's not just selling one product, but maybe upselling, getting a whole suit. Maybe it's a top to go along with those shorts. Maybe it's a hoodie and that upsell really helps drive up that total basket size. But uh, lots of other things you can track in revenue, sales conversion rates on a normal month, during the holidays, during promotional events. 
And there's also something to think about too when you're talking about revenue. You could drive a lot of revenue, but not a lot of profit. So one thing to think about too is the incrementality of sales. If I put something on sale for Cyber Monday that's 70% off, but my margin is 50%, then you're actually losing money and not even making money. So congratulations on increasing your revenue, you're out of business. So what you wanna do is figure out how to use promotions in a way that drives sales you wouldn't ordinarily get and that also is protective of the profit that you need to have so you can sustain your business going forward. Shifting from e-commerce a little bit to more of a software type application that we're familiar with, Buffer is a social media scheduling platform that allows you to schedule your posts ahead of time. Buffer wanted to figure out how to retain their users, you know, over the months and then years to keep them there. Since of course it's expensive to get new customers and you want them happy and continuing on and paying for a subscription. And they did an analysis and they found out that the users who ended up posting 15 plus times in that first week were most likely to be active three, six, nine plus months later. And so that becomes an incredibly powerful metric. So that leading metric, the number of posts in that first week helps lead to a lagging metric on subscriptions a year later. So that becomes incredibly powerful to have that leading metric because with one lagging metric that everyone has from finance to all that, they are able to rally everyone together. So now you have a product manager for notifications, for emails, for in the app notifications. You have learning people that write tutorials and film videos on how to do things. And how do you get everyone together? You have that sort of North Star of the financials connected to that leading metric of how many posts in the first time that week. So in other words, show me the money doesn't work. That's just the lagging metric. So no, show me the money, Jerry Maguire. Show me the money! Oh. Instead, it's show me the leading indicator for retention. Yeah, it, it's not gonna catch on, but you get the idea. It's better to figure out what actually drives the money. That's probably touchdowns for Jerry Maguire. And for us, it's maybe how many times you post on Buffer. <laughs>